cell notation and cathodic protection. Going to be the topics we cover in this lesson. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below where you can find those courses. Now, this lesson's part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'll still be releasing several lessons a week for at least a little bit longer throughout this school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. So we'll start with cell notation. So for a typical galvanic cell, there's a special shorthand notation we use to describe these lovely pictures we've got. And you've got to kind of be able to break it down and identify what's the anode, what's the cathode, things of this sort. And so go back to this one here. So zinc solid plus copper two plus gives you zinc two plus plus copper solid. So we identified that zinc was the anode and copper was the cathode. Uh, reaction here at the anode was zinc going to zinc two plus half reaction, I should say, uh, at the cathode is copper two plus going to copper. Now the cell notation, just like the picture we drew here, is always gonna have the anode on the left and the cathode on the right. That is mandatory for proper cell notation here. And so you just put the different components in the half reaction at that particular electrode. So here we're gonna put zinc and we're gonna put zinc two plus. And in this case, we've got zinc solid, so we usually indicate the phase. The zinc two plus is aqueous here. When you've got something aqueous, you typically give its concentration in parentheses. If it's gaseous, you'll put its partial pressure in parentheses. And I'm gonna do this under standard conditions, which means the concentration here is just going to be one molar. So, but notice these are in different phases. This guy's solid, this guy's aqueous. And when you've got two components in a half cell that are in different phases, you put a single vertical line between them, a single slash like so, so and that is proper. So there is our anode compartment. On the other side, we've got copper two plus turning into copper. The copper product there is a solid. The copper two plus once again is aqueous, and so we've got to put its concentration in parentheses. And once again, I'm using standard conditions. So it'll be one molar concentration. And again, these are in two different phases, and so we'll put a single slash between them. So, and then we've got anode on the left, cathode on the right, and in between them, you're typically going to have a double slash. And what that double slash is ac actually representing is the salt bridge between the two half cells. And so with the anode on the left, the cathode on the right, you're almost always gonna have that salt bridge right in the middle, and that's your cell notation. When you come across this, you're supposed to look at this and realize, oh, there's the anode, that's oxidation. And on the right, there's the cathode, that's reduction. That's what you're supposed to kind of get from that. Now, if we do uh, another example here, and I wanted to give you a, a little bit different example where we've got an inert electrode involved, so you kind of see how that changes things ever so subtly here. All right, so in this one here, we've got zinc plus two Fe3 plus going to zinc two plus plus two Fe2 plus. And the big thing here, I'm leaving the anode exactly the same. I'm gonna have it exactly looking like so. We'll start there. So we've got the zinc, Zinc two plus and at standard conditions, that would be one molar, put a single slash between them. So, and then before we write the cathode, that's where we'd have the double slash representing the salt bridge. So, but the question is for the cathode, we have an issue. And the issue is that both the reactant and both the product, they're both aqueous, which means you can't make the electrode out of either one of them. It's so your electrode's gotta be, you know, something electrically conductive, usually a solid metal. And if you don't have a solid metal as part of your half reaction, well then you have to use what's called an inert electrode. So in a very common inert electrode here that we're gonna use is platinum. And even though that's not actually participating in the half reaction, it is gonna be a part of your cell notation here. So in this case, we've got Fe3 plus as the reactant, Fe2 plus as the product. And again, they're both aqueous, so we should put concentrations. And if we're doing this under standard conditions, they're both one molar concentrations, but they're in the same phase. So we don't put a slash between them. We're just gonna separate them by a comma in this case, but we do have to include the inner electrode as well. And that's platinum solid. And that is in a different phase than the other two. And so we will put a single slash of separation there with a the difference in phase yet again. We've still got the anode on the left, we've still got the cathode on the right, and we had one extra component here with the inert electrode. So, and then again here, is a big difference I wanted you to see is that the reactant and the product weren't separated by a single slash like they were here, here, or here, because in this example, they were actually in the same phase and you're not so commonly gonna come across that. So I didn't want you know your exam to be the first time you saw that or something. So, but once again, you're supposed to see anode on the left, cathode on the right, Oxidation over here, reduction over here. So, and that's the way this cell notation looks. 
So now let's talk about cathodic protection. And so cathodic protection, ultimately what you're doing is you're forcing iron to be the cathode uh, in a spontaneous reaction. Uh, and this is ultimately gonna prevent its corrosion in the process. So you're probably familiar with the fact that iron corrodes in air. It, when we say corrodes in this case, it means it gets oxidized. And it, initially it turns into Fe2+, so you go from iron metal to Fe2+, when it reacts with just oxygen in the air. So and eventually that Fe2+, is gonna get oxidized even further to Fe3+, forming some combination here of iron three oxide, which is what you normally think of as rust and has that characteristic rust color. So, but this first step was what we really wanna focus on because this is, if we can prevent this step where the iron gets turned into Fe2+, well then the next step never gets a chance to happen and we never form rust. So that's kind of the goal here. And in this case, you can see it's a very spontaneous process. We got the relevant half reactions here. And so uh, we're having the reduction of oxygen, positive 1.23 volts, but we're gonna have the oxidation of Fe to Fe2+, plus, making that positive 0.44 volts for an overall E cell under standard conditions of 1.67 volts. So it's a very spontaneous reaction. So how are we gonna prevent this from happening? Well, what we're gonna ultimately do is get zinc involved in the process. So. Well, first let's talk about the relevance of this just a little bit. So uh, oftentimes, you know, lots of things are made of iron or of steel, which is, you know, uh, iron's the principal component of. Uh, and if it rusts, you got problems, right? So if all the nails rust, if, you know, the metal building rusts or the, the girders or whatever, uh, the steel beams, you got problems. So major industrial costs associated with this. So preventing this from happening, big deal. And so one of the common places you'll find this is in like oil pipelines where the pipes are made of steel. And if those oil pipelines, the, the pipes themselves start rusting, well, replacing them is really expensive because one, you got to shut down the pipeline for a little bit. So but two, then you got to dig them up and replace all the pipes if they're underground anyways, or uh, things of this sort. And so what they often do with these lovely pipes here, we'll take a section of pipe here. So, and if it's a buried pipe, what they'll do is they'll take a piece of zinc metal so, so I'll have a piece of zinc metal every once in a while and then kind of have it going up to the surface. And they'll just put, you know, these every so many feet along the pipe and stuff like this. And the zinc metal is ultimately going to prevent the iron in the steel here from getting oxidized. Because if you look here, zinc is more easily oxidized than iron is. When iron's oxidized, it's positive 0.44 volts. When zinc is oxidized, it's positive 0.76 volts. And so if you've got a choice of which one's gonna happen, well, whichever one is more spontaneous generally is going to happen, and that's going to be the zinc in this case. And so the reaction you're gonna get here, instead of the two Fe, you're now gonna replace that with the two Zn plus O2 plus four H plus going to two, not Fe, two zinc two plus, plus two water. And now your E cell is gonna be even more spontaneous overall. And so uh, 1.23 plus the point, uh, positive 0.76 for the reverse oxidation uh, should be the 1.99 volts here. And so this reaction is even more favorable than the one where iron gets oxidized. So by putting something that's more easily oxidized than the iron in the, you know, in uh, connection with it. So you've got something that's going to get oxidized instead. And what ultimately happens here is that the zinc is actually going to lose electrons. And those electrons are going to get transferred through the iron to the oxygen. And so the iron is actually going to act as some sort of inert electrode. It's just going to transfer the electrons. It's not going to participate, but it's going to hand off the electrons from the zinc to the oxygen. And so we're forcing iron to be this inert cathode, and that's where the name cathodic protection comes from. You're forcing iron to be the cathode and an inert cathode in the reaction, and that prevents it from getting oxidized in the process. That is cathodic protection. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, a like and a comment letting me know pretty much the best things you can do to support the channel. And if you are looking for practice on electrochemistry or anything in general chemistry as well, then take a look at my general chemistry master course. I'll leave a link in the description. Free trial is available. Happy studying.